Charmides is one of Plato's early dialogues and is a conversation between Socrates, a beautiful youth named Charmides, and his cousin, Critias. It should be noted that both of these characters were real people who ended up becoming tyrants after the Peloponnesian War. This fact should be kept in mind as the dialogue unfolds. The dialogue begins as Socrates returns to Athens from a battle asking if there are any new up-and-coming youths that he might be interested in meeting. Critias informs him that Charmides is both physically beautiful and has a noble soul. The two devise a plan to gain an audience with the boy. Charmides, who has been complaining of a headache, is told that Socrates has a cure for him. The cure is a certain leaf, which cannot be administered without first ensuring that the soul is healthy. This begins their discussion on temperance. Socrates asks Charmides if he is temperate, to which Charmides refuses to answer as not to boast by saying yes he is, or insult himself by saying that he's not. They determine that it would be best to define temperance, at which point they could readily determine if Charmides possesses this virtue. Charmides suggested three possibilities of what temperance is, all of which are shot down. First, he suggests that it's a quietness that is rejected. Second, that it is modesty. And third, that temperance is minding your own business. Socrates is particularly aggressive toward this last proposition, which aggravates Critias, who apparently is the one who taught it to Charmides. At this point, Critias takes up the argument. The dialogue takes a sharp turn away from temperance and towards self-knowledge, or wisdom, where the distinction between knowing and knowing that one knows is made, suggesting the existence of a knowledge that only knows knowledge, or rather, a type of knowledge that exists to know if something is known or if it's not. This skill appears both quite helpful and quite useless to Socrates, and is eventually abandoned. Just like there cannot be a sight that only sees vision, or a sense of hearing that only hears hearing, there can be no knowledge that knows knowing. This turn in the discussion is a very important one, however. A prominent theme in all of Plato's works is the unity of virtue and knowledge. Can one be good without knowing what good is? Can someone know what good is without being good? Plato thinks not. On the one hand, Plato sees virtue as something that transcends action and exists as a quality of one's being. Further, he sees people as choosing normally what, they, what is best for them, so they will choose that which they believe is good. This is why there is such a seamless transition between virtue, temperance, and knowledge as the topic of discussion. Returning to the historical fact that Socrates' partners in dialogue became tyrants, we encounter another very important theme in Plato's works. That is, the fact that Socrates often fails to effectively change the minds of those who he is speaking with, including this particular dialogue. The two interlocutors don't end up agreeing with him. The conclusion is never made in terms of wisdom or in terms of temperance. There is an impasse, and these impasses are at the heart of most Platonic dialogues. I believe this is meant to teach a critical lesson about Plato's philosophies, but that truth is best learned firsthand and becomes more readily apparent after reading widely through Plato's canon. So at that, I invite you to stay tuned, and in the meantime, read Carmenes. It's very short and well worth it.